Hi, welcome to Comic Talk. I'm Josh. And I spy with my little eye something criminal. Yeah, this is our review of Criminal by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Alright, so we're talking about uh, 1 through 5 of the first series. So, if you buy that in trade form, that's uh, called Coward, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, when did this come out, first of all? 2006. Yeah, it's pretty old now, like mm -hmm. a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, still easily available, though, right? And yeah. You can get it on, like, Amazon or whatever. We have the actual issues, as you can see. Uh, so, we won't be reviewing anything regarding... The actual trade paperback format. Right. So if there's any cool extras or anything, that's not what this is about. We're just talking about the story and the writing and the art and all that. So okay, what is this about? We have some some crime players, I guess, uh, and one of them's known as kind of a coward. Um, that's our main protagonist that we're following through this. And uh, yeah, he gets set up to do a job with some cops. He thinks he's scoring some, uh, some diamonds, if I recall. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, millions of dollars in diamonds. Sure. This is a pretty straightforward kind of crime caper mm -hmm. deal. Most of the trappings of it are relatively standard, mm -hmm. I would say. Like, he, he's using a formula here. Uh, we have everything from, you know, he's the mastermind, but he's uh, reluctant, uh, just got out of you know, prison kind of thing. It's that whole vibe that you normally get. There's the whole thing with the girl. There's somebody, you know, a, a woman involved who mm -hmm. he feels like he has to take care of and thus he makes mistakes. Uh, the older guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff about this that feels immediately familiar to anybody with comfortable with the genre or familiar with the genre. But uh, I would not not in any way say that that's a negative. Uh, yeah, I will say... Um, in the context of this series as a whole, uh, this one's probably the most standard, um, and it also kind of stands apart from. There's actually like, there's actually like this whole criminal universe kind of thing going on where they have like the Undertow Bar, the Lawless family is huge. There's like a recurring crime lord throughout the whole thing, Sebastian Hyde, and then get into his son at some point, you know, and then there's like bits with like the uh, proprietor of the Undertow Bar, and this one kind of stands apart from all that. So I don't know if when he wrote it he had the sort of like all encompassing overarching like theme thing that he's really going for now. But it's still really good. Yeah this I believe by the end of this first run this series got two Eisner Awards. So there was uh, best creative team and um, best new series I think. Yeah it definitely deserves it. Uh Again, being Brubaker and Phillips, we've seen their work before together many times. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's just something about the way he writes and the way Phillips draws that just works so well. And I, I think that's why they keep working together. But mm -hmm. uh, there's this element of, I guess, realness to both of, of their approaches. Uh, even, even when Brubaker tackles like fantastical stuff or you know when he gets into the superhero genre other things other than this he still tends to sort of drag it down into reality mm -hmm. uh, so when you give him something more hard-boiled like this something grittier with you know the quotes around it uh, kind of feel uh, Sean Phillips just obviously is the perfect fit for it so it's good to mm -hmm. see him I, I'm glad that it's these two working on this I, I don't know if there's anybody better fit I really, with um, Velvet, he's working with Sean Epting, uh, which is an awesome fit. It's just a little bit more realistic, I guess, whereas this is more comic-y kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. But I think both of them are appropriate, just kind of in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but this has such a, a pulpy feel to it. Yeah. You know, it feels like a just a really top-notch dime store novel in in like comic book form so to me it, it makes sense that you would want somebody a little sketchier for it and a little little sure. little uh less clean around the edges you know it's mm -hmm. it's a, a very looser. it's loose and rough mm -hmm. looking and it, it really just matches 
uh, the tone of okay. of the writing. Whereas Velvet's more like a 007 mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, also you makes would sense. want that. Yeah, right. Uh, so, how do you feel about how this plays out? Did you did you enjoy the narrative of it? More or less, because it, first of all, do you agree that it's it's relatively straightforward in in regards to the structure of the story? Yeah. Okay. So that being said, then did do you, did you enjoy that aspect of it, or did it um, did it bother you? I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed it on a couple different regards. The first one being that I felt like there was. A decent amount of restraint and just the approachings of these trappings and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's kind of those things that you can't really avoid altogether. Um, but he has a really good sense of show don't tell mm-hmm. and just um, the way in which he gives you information and the points at which you get the information. I thought was really great. And on that note about when you get the information, there are some things that I didn't see coming. Uh, which is awesome because usually this kind of stuff especially I mean like crime stuff when you get into like the sort of mid-grade whatever you can usually predict everything that's gonna happen like Mm -hmm. it's not hard Um, such was not really the case with this and even if you did predict something it ends up having consequences or coming into play later in such a way that you wouldn't have expected yeah there's more nuance to it i think would be an easy way to describe it but you know each of the beats it feels like here's where you go next but the difference to me with this versus just you know a lot of the things that are similar to it is just the the nuance uh, regard regarding how the characters are actually written Mm -hmm. so you know where we'd normally get sort of a one-dimensional uh, thug, right? Mm-hmm. And here we get a guy who speaks uh, eloquently or, or makes sense of the, the situation. Uh, and where we might get a very brash lead character, here we have this coward aspect mm-hmm. that really gives it a lot more roundness. Yeah, you I know, think it, it makes it more sympathetic too. Fills it out a little better. From your normal reader's perspective, like everybody's calling him a coward and you're sitting there thinking, well, I'd probably do the same fucking thing if I was smart enough to think of it. Right. Why why wouldn't you get away? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that that sort of encapsulates the difference between this and all of the other things that story and narrative wise play out pretty much the same way is that we have these aspects to characters that aren't always exactly what you would expect from them or... Mm -hmm. It's not just the good side of everybody or, or the, the cool criminal aspect of each character that we right. get. In, in that way, it actually reminds me of The Fade Out, which we read this year and really loved by Brubaker and Phillips. Mm-hmm. In that, uh, we get these more rounded characters, and as we go through, we get to see the, the bad side, or not even necessarily bad per se, but just the negative aspects of their characters, the things that make them not such a great person mm-hmm. or... Uh, their failings, you know, it, there's a lot of failings in here with all the characters involved. You'd also, I mean, I think it's pretty standard to have, like, the uh, the Godfather role, like, ever since that shit came out, mm-hmm. you know, and, like, our old Godfather-esque character on this is, like, extremely flawed to the point where he's, like, the comic relief most of the time, mm-hmm. you know, and I thought that was an excellent um, decision to make. Yeah, I agree. It, but this is definitely a character drama, and the characters are where it, it shines. It's not. Yeah. It's not the narrative. It's it's not the story as it as it happens. As There's much a couple, as it's a couple moments. There are, like, but it's the it's, getaway it's, car. I thought was really cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But it, it's mostly this idea of putting great characters into a very cliche or standard story. Mm-hmm. Uh, that really makes it work, which is kind of really his thing, right? Like he takes relatively straightforward stories and narratives and, and he fleshes out the characters more than most other people would. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you're familiar with Brubaker, I think this is one of the better versions of that, but everything yeah. he does is like that. So Yeah, true. As far as like criminal overall, um, this is might be my second least favorite arc. Um, there was one called Last of the Innocent that I liked a little bit less than this. Um, 
that being said, both of those, I would put it at least like a seven, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about like the, the shittiest diamond at the, at the jewelry store or something like that. Like it's still going to be better than fucking everything else anyways. So right. what are you going to do? So I think what we're also going to do here is we're going to end up doing a part two of this where we talk about uh, basically the next couple of runs of this. Yeah, but there's the lawless arc. And, right, yeah. we, and we'll get on to that later, which actually we think is better. But this is the start, right? This is mm -hmm. where it began, uh, and it's worth reading. It's, it's good stuff. And would you say that this in a lot of ways improves the series overall by reading this? Yeah. I'm kind of a nerd for like uh, researching everything, which I think a lot of that comes into play with like how I feel about this. Like I can appreciate the fade out so much more like that we've read Catwoman, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and this is a series that, that has a long run. It's, it's, he, him and Phillips, they return to it, it seems like, and continue with it. and Yeah, just every uh, so often. They keep just putting more. more of it. So mm -hmm. uh, it's really worth, I think, going back and reading this original run here. Now, is it still with Icon, or has it moved now? Image owns it now. To Image. But I believe the only thing that they've actually got that their... Uh, the only thing that they've published of it has been like a couple one shots. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Brubaker and his mailing list thing has been talking about like a big announcement for the fall or whatever. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get like a proper criminal run on the image mm -hmm. coming up soon. Cool. It's good. You should read it. Uh, that's why we brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. What do we got coming up in the weeks to come here, Drew? Uh, we're going to be talking about the Eisner Awards. We're going to be um, reading shit on Wednesdays, and we'll probably read shit on another weekend after that. Yeah. All of that is true. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can look below for all of the different links for all of our other stuff, our social media and all that kind of stuff. And if you're... Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. All that, yeah. And if you're listening on a podcast, uh, look us up on YouTube, and you can get all that. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have, Bye. have a good day. <laughs>